is here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Well, if you ever liked a tweet by Donald Trump or retweeted a tweet tweet by Donald Trump or maybe were mentioned by Donald Trump, the government is going to know about it and they're going to monitor you based on the subpoena that came out of what they're asking for against Donald Trump. Yes, your government, once again, will be spying on you. Welcome to the Mark Levin Show. The great one is off tonight. It is me, Rich Zioli from Mark's hometown of Philadelphia, Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Great to be with you. Mark will be back tomorrow. And I tell you, I'm I'm always amazed. The other day it was a story about how air marshals are now monitoring every single American who flew into the capital region. Forget even if you went to the United States Capitol, whether you were near the Capitol, whether you were even in the District of Columbia on January 6, 2021, the high holy day of the left. If you flew into the D.C. region, air marshals are tracking you. You're in a database now. And they're going to bust your chops when you get to the airport just to make your life miserable, just because we have allowed the weaponization of our government to grow and grow and grow under the guise of we have to we went from fighting terrorists and we went from, you know, we got attacked in 9-11. So we got to uh, just completely shred the Fourth Amendment, let the government spy on us without warrants, general warrants, whatever they need to do. Read our emails, listen to our phone calls because we have to stop terrorists to now. You are the terrorist. You are a potential domestic violent extremist. And they got to know where you are and what you're saying and what you're doing. I mean, maybe you fly the Betsy Ross flag like I do. Maybe you have a don't tread on me flag like I do. Maybe maybe you have a MAGA hat, a red MAGA hat. You might be a domestic violent extremist. You might be just sitting around plotting the next January 6th. So they have to know what you're saying at all times. They have to know what you're thinking at all times. And if you ever interacted with the former president of the United States of America in any way, shape or form, then they're going to know about that, too, because they want to get access to all of those tweets. Now, the judge at the center of this case, as I know Mark has talked a lot about, is completely and utterly biased against Donald Trump. I want to remind all the, 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 the phony civil libertarians on the left, because they don't love liberty in any way, shape or form. And there's nobody on the left who's a civil libertarian left you can't be how how can you how can you watch the increasing authoritarian nature of the united states of america and still call yourself a lefty or identify as a democrat or even a liberal at this point how could you so you're a fraud if you still maintain that you would vote democrat and you give a damn about civil liberties when you are charged by the government of the united states when you are charged with a crime the bill of rights is there to protect you from your government And there's several amendments that are there for the purpose of making sure you have a fair trial. You have a jury trial. You don't have to say anything that would that would incriminate you. And the government has to disclose everything to you. The government has to make it clear what evidence they have against you. You don't have to prove you did anything at all. They have to prove your guilt. You don't have to say a word. You don't have to prove that you're innocent. They have to prove your guilt. That's how it works. And the framers of the Constitution were very adamant about protecting people from charges by the government. And one of the the, the key ways we protect the rights of those accused of a crime is by having an impartial judge and jury. An impartial judge and jury to hear the case, preside over the case, the judge's perspective, and make sure that the constitutional rights of the defendant are absolutely being protected throughout the process. To make sure that the government, which has enormous power, and all the time and money it needs. You know, you Donald Trump's lucky because he's got a lot of money, but he doesn't have a lot of time. He's running for president of the United States of America. The government has all the time and money in the world. They've got lots of lawyers. They don't have to worry about getting clients. Like If you're an attorney in the private sector right now listening on the Mark Levin show, you have to hang a shingle outside your door. You got you to gotta get business. And then you have to service your clients and entertain your clients and do all those things. You are a government lawyer at the United States Department of Justice. All you have to do is go home at five o'clock and you come in the next day at nine o'clock or whatever the hours are. And then in the course of your day, you just sit around and figure out how you can destroy Donald Trump. That's your job. That's what you do as an attorney for the United States of America. And since the government has vast resources and it doesn't run out of time or money and doesn't have to worry about getting new clients, those attorneys, 
the judge is supposed to be there to protect the constitutional rights of the accused. But this judge hates Donald Trump. This judge is warning that the United States of America is facing an authoritarian threat. What does that mean? You know exactly what it means. It's the same reason why if you flew into the capital region on January 6, 2021, they're now monitoring you and profiling you and putting you on a no-fly list. It's the same reason why they're reading all the tweets of anyone who interacted with Donald Trump on Twitter. It's because you might be a domestic violent extremist. You, you're probably a Trump supporter. And so this judge, when she says the U.S. faces an authoritarian threat, what she means is if Trump's reelected. So she's going to do everything she possibly can to make sure that Donald Trump does not become president of the United States. She sees the time of testing for the nation as facts are denied and disputed. Judge Key to the January 6th case warns U.S. faces authoritarian threat. The people who are behind all these things, whether it's the judge in Trump's case, the judge who spearheaded all the prosecutions of anybody who was near the Capitol building on January 6th, 2021, they are all biased against every single defendant that came in that courtroom. Every single one of them. And they all believe, as does Judge Chutkin, who is overseeing Trump's trial, they all believe that it is their job to stop Trump from becoming president. Now, Joe Biden has recognized something, and that is that Trump's going to be the nominee. I have a story here today how the Republican establishment has now decided to back Nikki Haley. And I know Mark's talked a lot about that. The very same people who were behind Jeb Bush and all the others, they first started out behind Governor Ron DeSantis. And look, let me say for the record, I have tremendous respect for Governor Ron DeSantis. I think he's an outstanding governor. What I've been saying since day one when he got in the race is that it's a long way to go, and I don't even know if he's going to make it to January. So I'm not going to start getting involved in the back and forth here because it, we've seen this before. People get into races, and, and they're the exalted one, and then it blows up. We've seen Scott Walker, Jeb Bush. I mean, we've seen this. Well, now the Republican establishment has decided that DeSantis can't do it. He has not been able to cut into Donald Trump's massive lead at all. And it may not be anything to do with him. It may just be with the fact that people just really want Trump back and they want him as the nominee in spite of or maybe because of the way the government is prosecuting him and persecuting him. Could be both. But if you can't cut into that lead and the Republican establishment does not want him and you know that they don't want him, the deep state, the swamp, they don't want him. They don't, the idea that he would go in there in January 2025 and actually try to restore the balance of power in the executive branch away from these faceless, nameless, unaccountable bureaucrats and back to the president of the United States of America so that all these faceless, nameless, unaccountable bureaucrats can't undermine him every single day from within their bureaucratic, faceless, nameless offices throughout the, the, the District of Columbia. The, the fact that that would occur makes a lot of people nervous because a lot of people get very, very rich off that swamp. Oh, yes. You know, the richest zip codes in America are all outside of Washington, D.C. Some fancy homes there. Lawyers and lobbyists and all kinds of people, they don't want to have that gravy train interrupted. And they know that Trump's going to go back and he's actually going to do something about the administrative state, the federal leviathan, as Mark calls it, that exists to stop him. The very same people, whether it was Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, who worked with the Department of Justice and the FBI, saying we will stop him from becoming president. And then all throughout the presidency, trying to undermine him, trying to stop him with phony collusion narratives and investigation after investigation. Those people need to go. Bureaucrats who decide that they have the power to ban my gas stove without so much as a vote by Congress, they need to go. People like that need to go. Bureaucrats who are at the EPA who decide, how can I make life a living hell for people in order to pursue my wacko green left agenda? They have to go. And that makes the, the left very nervous. The people at the FDA and the CDC who do the bidding of Big Pharma, whatever they want, whatever they want, because they want jobs there one day. They want to leave their faceless, nameless bureaucratic offices in D.C. and go get their payout at Pfizer, Moderna, whatever. They, they do not want this gravy train that is the swamp interrupted in any way, shape, or form. So the establishment is now deciding to throw massive amounts of cash towards Nikki Haley. And it is such a cheap and phony exercise, and it infuriates me. 
I'll tell you one thing. After she came out and said that every person needs to register on social media and you can't have anonymous accounts. And they tried to equate that to a joking tweet that Trump put out in, I think, 2013, where he said something to the effect of uh, all the losers and haters should have to have their names publicly known or something like that. Obviously a joke. He never tried to do anything like that as president. But when Nikki Haley came out and said that you won't be able to follow the role model of the founders and use anonymous names, pseudonyms, like Joe Biden did as vice president when he was making money for the Biden crime family, for example. She said that. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, how can anybody who considers himself to be a conservative support somebody who has a position like that? And I know she tried to walk it back and it was days of walkbacks because it was so incredibly destructive. But the, the, the mindset of that, that we're not going to let you criticize your government anonymously. The very same government that is going after people for their political beliefs, that is monitoring, spying. I shouldn't say monitoring sounds like a minor word, but it's a big deal. It's what they do in tyrannical countries. They monitor their citizenry. They monitor their political speech. They make sure that they're always on the right side of things, their side of things. And in the United States of America, we have a long tradition going back to the Federalist Papers and the Anti-Federalist Papers of writing things anonymously. But the establishment hates Trump. You know that. So now they're piling more cash behind Nikki Haley. They've decided Ron DeSantis is not their guy. And they're making a huge bet on Nikki Haley, led by the Koch brothers and others. And the story from Politico goes into the fact that this, and I'll read you the quote, accelerating Haley train could create the only conditions under which Trump could be beaten in a Republican primary. That is not going to happen. She's not going to beat Trump in a primary. There is no Haley train. There's a Trump train. There's not a Haley train. Again, I'm not saying this in any other position right now other than I like to call balls and strikes. It's what I do in my afternoon drive show on WPHT in Philly every day. I call balls and strikes. Trump's lead is too massive at this point. No one's cutting into that, period. But that does not mean that the money establishment class is not going to try. And they're going to try to get other people out of the race. They're going to try to get Chris Christie out. They're going to try to get DeSantis out. You're going to try to make it a one-on-one race, and it's still not going to change anything. The Democrats have all accepted the fact that Trump's going to be the nominee. That's why Joe Biden is now attacking Trump directly, because they've realized now he's going to be the nominee. But that is not going to stop. Understand, that will not stop the establishment class from trying to stop him in every way, shape, and form. So you have that going on, and then you also have, of course, the United States government trying to stop him. And you have states now with their insane idea that he can't be on the ballot under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which, as Mark has explained, does not count for presidents of the United States. It counts for senators and members of Congress and for the House and electors of president and the vice president, but not the president. But that doesn't mean they're not going to try, because you know that they will. And at the very same time that's happening, Joe Biden wants you to know inflation, what is now costing you, I think the story from CBS today said, Americans need an extra $11,400 today just to afford the basics. But wait till you hear what the president says regarding inflation. Turns out it's not his fault. No, it's the fault of all those stores out there, those retailers who just won't lower prices for you. It's their fault. 877-381-3811. This is the Mark Levin Show. The great one is off tonight. It's me, Rich Zioli from 1210 WPHT, Mark's hometown of Philadelphia. Coming right back. Mark Lovin. Have you seen the headlines lately? Third highest deficit in history. Digital dollar sparks uncertainty. We're living in an unpredictable world, but gold is still gold. It's weathered many storms. My gold gives me peace of mind. It's tangible. And I'm a firm believer in owning gold. My favorite gold company? Augusta Precious Metals. Why? Let me tell you something. They're top of the top. If you have an IRA or a 401k and you want to diversify with physical gold, you can learn about the benefits of a gold IRA from Augusta Precious Metals. They're outstanding. Get a free guide to gold IRAs from Augusta Precious Metals today. Text LEVIN, L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. Again, LEVIN, to 68592. Or visit AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text data and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. 
Yes, things are very expensive out there. But like the left always does, they blame greed. They don't blame government spending. They don't blame their own policies. They blame greed. It's what they do. It's all they know how to do because they hate capitalism and they want you to know that even though Joe Biden has been destructive to this economy and his spending has led to inflation and we're still spending more, we're about to do another big foreign aid package over a cool hundred, hundred billion. It's not bad. That's not the reason why you're hurting out there. It's not the reason why Americans need, according to CBS News, an extra $11,400 today just to afford the basics. Just the basics. The typical American household right now must spend an additional $11,434 annually just to maintain the same standard of living they'd enjoyed in January of 2021. Now, I mean, you could argue that perhaps, just perhaps, this matters more to people than what happened on January 6th of 2021. You could make you make that argument. I, for one, would subscribe to that argument because I still believe it's the economy stupid. So I think the average person out there, as much as the left wants to keep screaming about democracy is going to die, even though we're not a democracy, but that's okay. Authoritarianism is rising. Donald Trump will destroy the world if he becomes president. And January 6, 2020, every day will be January 6, the high holy day of the left. Every day will be another January 6. As much as they try to go out there and say all those things, I think the average American thinks. Well, I don't know about January 6th, but January 7th, I was doing a whole lot better. <laughs> January 8th, 9th, 10th, 1st, 2nd, 3rd. I mean, every day of the month, I was doing better than I am this coming January of 2024, because who knows how much worse it's going to be. But think about that. $11,434 annually just to maintain the same standard of living they'd enjoyed in January of 2021, Trump's last month in office. Before, right before inflation soared to 40 year highs. Did you get an $11,434 raise this year? Did you? I hope you did. I really do. I hope you did. Because if you did, then you're going to be okay. You're going to be just fine. But I don't think you did. Most people didn't get an $11,434 raise. And that's just to cover the same standard of living that they had. That's not to go all extravagant and start getting those. LED Wi-Fi lights that change color with an app. I'm not talking about even that. I'm talking about the basics, just food, just the things you need to live. And of course, as you read the article, you know, they blame it on everything besides Joe Biden's policies. Such figures underscore the financial squeeze many families continue to face, even as the rate of U.S. inflation recedes. Does it recede? Has it receded in your life as you go to the grocery store? Have you found that it recedes? Because I have not found that it recedes. In fact, if anything, I found that it's getting more expensive every day at the grocery store, every single day. But wait, there's more. When I come back, I'll share with you what Joe Biden has to say about this. And again, it's not his fault as they try their best to blame retailers. This is the Mark Levin Show with me, Rich Zioli. We're coming right back. Have you seen the headlines lately? Third highest deficit in history. Digital dollar sparks uncertainty. We're living in an unpredictable world, but gold is still gold. It's weathered many storms. My gold gives me peace of mind. It's tangible. And I'm a firm believer in owning gold. My favorite gold company? Augusta Precious Metals. Why? Let me tell you something. They're top of the top. If you have an IRA or a 401k and you want to diversify with physical gold, you can learn about the benefits of a gold IRA from Augusta Precious Metals. They're outstanding. Get a free guide to gold IRAs from Augusta Precious Metals today. Text LEVIN, L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. Again, LEVIN, to 68592. Or visit AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text data and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. The Mark Levin Show, live and national at 877-381-3811. Yes, the great one is off tonight. It is me, Rich Zioli from Mark's hometown of Philadelphia, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT, with you and 877-381-3811 is our number. I'm going to talk about a lot tonight, including Israel and the aid and the fact that this administration, which as Mark said the other night, is the most anti-Israel administration 
since Israel was officially a state, uh, they are still at it right now, still with their conditions on Israel and still telling Israel what to do and how to fight this war against Hamas. And there's some new details on that that I will share with you throughout the course of the Mark Levin Show tonight. But I want to focus on the economy for a moment, because in all the talk about the weaponization of government, how they're going after you for your political beliefs, how they're targeting the former president of the United States, Democrats are panicking. I mean, you, you, you know that, right? They are panicking at this moment. This is why David Axelrod came out a few weeks ago. If you remember Axelrod, he was in uh, Chicago, Illinois. They did the Obamas had their little reunion, the 15th anniversary of this historic win where he said, you know, today we change America, whatever, whatever the exact line was, the, the, the transformation, the fundamental transformation of America. Well, David Axelrod, who was Obama's guy, comes out on that Sunday morning and says, basically, in effect, Joe Biden's got to go, right? Joe Biden's got to go. He can't win. And then he doubles down on it. Joe Biden calls him the, a pejorative for a man's, you know, the P word for that. And David Axelrod says, hey, look, call me whatever you want, but the guy can't win. And then you have these other people coming out, Bill Maher, and you have other pundits on the left coming out and saying the same thing. And the Democrats are panicking. They realize Joe Biden's a terrible candidate. He's, he's corrupt. He's corrupt. He's lazy. There's a story that just came out a short time ago regarding some more mysterious money coming Joe Biden's way. A bank investigator flagged unusual Chinese payments behind the $40,000 check to Joe Biden. And I'll share those details with you as well. But he's corrupt. Remember in 2020 when the Hunter Biden laptop story came out and immediately the unholy triad of the government and big tech and the corporate media rushed to make sure that nobody could ever learn the truth about that. They said it was Russian misinformation, and they told you it was Russian disinformation. And if you tried to actually read the story, they wouldn't let you. And they, 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 they took the New York Post off Twitter for, I think, two weeks or something. You couldn't share the article. You were, you, if you ever said anything like, wow, this Hunter Biden laptop is real, it was flagged by then Twitter at the time, now X, Facebook, all these other sites. Well, the reason why they did that is not because of the disgusting, and they are disgusting pictures of Hunter Biden on the laptop. I've seen them. You've seen them. Don't ever look at them before you eat a meal. It won't work out well for you. But it was not because he was snorting cocaine off of strippers. It was because of the corruption of Joe Biden. It was all there. And in 2020, you know, he was Uncle Joe in the basement. He was going to be the nice guy that brought Americans back together again. Oh, make everybody love each other. Just like a, like an uncle who takes you to the zoo for the day and then lets you rub his hairy legs in the pool. But if they let everybody realize that he's, he's actually a corrupt swamp creature and also, by the way, a jerk, he is a nasty, nasty guy, well, then that whole little narrative that they created around Joe Biden just goes away. It blows up. They can't do that this time around because everybody knows now the Hunter Biden laptop's real. I mean, Hunter Biden's such a moron. But he decided to sue John Paul Mac Isaac, who's the guy that owns the laptop repair shop where he dropped off the laptop. So everybody knows it's real. The contents of it are coming out. They've been out. They're out there. But the government knew it was real in 2019. The FBI had it. The government worked to make sure that when the story was going to break, they would be able to then do their thing and tell everybody it was disinformation. So they could not jeopardize Joe Biden's chances in November and be stuck with another four years of Donald Trump, among other efforts that they undertook in that election, obviously, to secure Joe Biden into the presidency. But this time around, they're dealing with a guy who's corrupt. All the corruption is coming out. Can't hide it anymore. Can't pretend anymore. Can't turn around and say it's not there. It's very, it's very real. And the other problem is now it's Joe Biden's economy and the economy stinks. It stinks. And you also have this guy who in the last three years has had a rapid dissension into Alzheimer's, whatever it is that's going on up there, dementia. You've seen it. I've seen it. We all know it. I know people still don't want to talk about it, but it's there. And the question is, how much worse is it a year from now? A year from now, when you're potentially talking about presidential debates, I don't know if they'll do them. They should. But if Joe Biden's the candidate, a year from now on the stage against Donald Trump, presumably, he's not going to do so well. 
he's not going to be in very good shape. I mean, these kind of diseases progress very, very quickly. I'm not a doctor, but I mean, I've seen it. You've seen it. We've all seen it in our lifetime. So you got the corruption. You got the fact that the average American today needs $11,400 more just to keep the same standard of living that they had in January of 2021. And the corruption keeps coming out. A, this is from National Review. A bank money laundering investigator expressed serious concerns about a transfer of funds from China that ultimately trickled down to President Biden in the form of a $40,000 check from his brother, James Biden, according to an email obtained by the House Oversight Committee. Biden received a $40,000 personal check from an account shared by his brother, James Biden, and his sister-in-law, Sarah Biden, in September 2017, money that was marked as a loan repayment. The alleged repayment was sent after funds were filtered from Northern International Capital. Now, now, what is Northern International Capital, you might be asking yourself? Well, that's an excellent question. Good for you for asking it. Turns out Northern International Capital is a Chinese company affiliated with the Chinese energy company CEFC. Through several accounts related to Hunter Biden and eventually down to the personal account shared by James and Sarah Biden. That's what we really call trickle down economics. It trickled all the way down from China directly into Joe Biden's pocket. Northern International Capital sent $5 million to Hudson West 3. That's the joint venture established by Hunter Biden and the Chinese energy associate Gong Wen Dong. Yes, that's really his name. Gong Wen Dong. And that was done on August 8th. But on the same day, Hunter's firm then sent $400,000 to Owasco PC. That's an entity owned and controlled by Hunter Biden. Tracking all this? Six days later, Hunter Biden wired $150,000 to Lion Hall Group. That is a company owned by James and Sarah Biden. Sarah Biden then withdrew $50,000 in cash from Lion Hall Group on August 28th and then deposited the funds into her and her husband's personal checking account later that day. On September 3rd, 2017, Sarah Biden wrote a check to Joe Biden for $40,000. An unidentified bank investigator sent an email on June 26, 2018, to colleagues raising concerns about money from Hudson West 3 to Owasco PC. The email said the $5 million in funds sent from Northern International Capital, that's the Chinese company, to Hudson West, that's Hunter's company, were primarily used to fund 16 wire transfers totaling more than $2.9 million. The wires were labeled as management fees and reimbursements. You know, when I try to get my mileage reimbursed at my company, I have to actually go through all it's a whole rigmarole with an Excel spreadsheet and receipts and whatnot. This, the, the just you know, a cool $2.9 million management fees and reimbursements. You know, somebody may have went out and bought toner on their own personal credit card. You got to get reimbursed for that, obviously. You know, this is why you use forensic accountants. This is why the people that were the whistleblowers who came before the House Oversight Committee and testified very bravely. This is why you need people like that. Because the only way you ever crack down on international money laundering schemes is because people are trained and have experience in following this kind of money and these kind of shady transactions and then building a case building a RICO case of international money laundering. I mean, this is the way the mafia operates, if there's still such a thing. This is the way the mob operates. This is the way that true international criminal enterprises operate. They just keep transferring money around, and they wash it as they go. You don't actually wash it with soap and water, but you wash it by moving it from one account to another. And then eventually it winds up in somebody's pockets, in this case, the former vice president of the United States, who would then become the president of the United States and do everything that China wants him to do. This president does not stand up to China. This president will never stand up to China because China has the receipts. China has the receipts. What, what, what? Did you think that this 
Northern International Capital is not a wholly owned subsidiary of the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party owns everything in China. They have all the receipts on Joe Biden. That's why Joe Biden is never going to tell Xi Jinping anything. He's never going to tell them, listen, bud, you stop buying Iran's oil. You stop giving Russia uh, weapons. You stop it. Knock it off. He's never going to put tariffs on China. He's not going to do a damn thing. China is now, I told you this the last time I filled in for Mark, China is absolutely expanding their naval supremacy in the South China Sea. Joe Biden doesn't care because they have the receipts. It's really extortion if you think about it. It's extortion of the president of the United States of America. This is what we were worried about in November of 2020. This is what we were worried about in October of 2020. We were worried about the fact that this president could be extorted by a hostile foreign adversary like China, for example. And that's why when Donald Trump and Joe Biden were debating and he brought up the Hunter Biden laptop story and Joe Biden went on about how he's never taken any money, he's nothing to do with Hunter Biden and never did any of those things. You remember that. It was all a lie because they couldn't shatter the narrative of, oh, it's nice basement Uncle Joe here to heal America with his nice, aw shucks, Joe Bidenisms. They couldn't risk the truth coming out that this guy is one corrupt SOB man who has milked this system and made millions and millions of dollars off of it. And as president, would never stand up to one of our greatest adversaries in the world, China. Would not pursue them to get to the truth of the pandemic which you know and I know. And shockingly enough, Vanity Fair this week did a very big, extensive investigative story on how in 2019, the Deputy Secretary of Energy, Dan Briette, a terrific guy, by the way, warned Dr. Anthony Fauci's National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases that China was playing fast and loose here in this Wuhan Institute of Virology lab with coronaviruses and that the Chinese military could exploit this. But we did nothing. We did nothing back then because Fauci and crew did not want to cut off the gain-of-function gravy train, obviously. And then, then, as soon as Biden became president, we made sure to cover for China in every way we could. So we never demanded an investigation. We never got to the bottom of this. We don't know what else is in that lab. And we don't know if the Chinese military was actually intending for this to be a bioweapon Or if this was, as I always say in my show in Philadelphia, somebody just eating an undercooked bat burger one day at the wet market. We we won't ever definitively know because this administration will never, ever hold China accountable for anything. How can they? China has all the receipts. And when you have the receipts, you get to have extortion over people. And that's what this is. You bring up extortion again, I'll have your legs broken. One of my classic Animal House lines. We find it unusual, quote from the story, we find it unusual that approximately 58% of the funds were transferred to the law firm in a few months and the frequency of payments appear erratic. This is what the investigator wrote in the email. An investigator who, by the way, has extensive experience in going after international criminal money laundering schemes. The investigator said Hudson West, Hunter Biden's firm, does not currently have any investment projects at this time, which raise further concerns as millions in fees are being paid, but does not appear to have any services rendered by a Wasco PC. And the email also points to the news at the time that indicted, that indicated China had been targeting children of politicians and purchasing political influence through sweetheart deals. There's more on this, a whole lot more on this. Biden's corruption combined with Biden's economy spells a defeat in November, which is why Democrats are panicking. This is the Mark Levin Show. Mark Levin. Have you seen the headlines lately? Third highest deficit in history. Digital dollar sparks uncertainty. We're living in an unpredictable world, but gold is still gold. It's weathered many storms. My gold gives me peace of mind. It's tangible. And I'm a firm believer in owning gold. My favorite gold company? Augusta Precious Metals. Why? Let me tell you something. They're top of the top. If you have an IRA or a 401k, and you want to diversify with physical gold, you can learn about the benefits of a gold IRA from Augusta Precious Metals. They're outstanding. Get a free guide to gold IRAs from Augusta Precious Metals today. 
Text LEVIN, L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N, to 68592. Again, LEVIN, to 68592. Or visit AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text data and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. There's a lot more to this uh, story regarding the corruption of Joe Biden and China, and it matters. It matters in a big way because this president is obviously allowing China to get away with literal murder. And I keep seeing all these stories about this new pneumonia that's sweeping through China. People are masking up again, lockdowns again. Could, could this be the next bioweapon? Could this be the next thing that keeps everybody at home in 2024, just in time for the presidential election? It would be nice if we could have gotten access to the Wuhan Institute of Virology to be able to look around the place. But the minute that Joe Biden became president, that was never going to happen. And so whatever China is up to there, it doesn't matter. They have the receipts on Joe Biden. It doesn't matter. But l- listen to what this is, this clip from this cut here, not, excuse me, this quote from National Review. Long before our investigation into President Biden's corruption, a bank money laundering investigator raised the exact concerns that we raised publicly about the Biden family business. Payments appear erratic, does not appear to have any services rendered, no current business purpose, and China's targeting of children of politicians and the purchase of political influence through sweetheart deals. That's what the bank investigator found in 2018. In fact, he was so concerned about Hunter Biden's financial transactions with the Chinese company, he wanted to reevaluate the bank's relationship with the customer. Now, Jim Comer, who's the chairman of the committee, said Biden knew about, participated in, and benefited from his family's shady China dealings. The Bidens began working with CEFC. This is a Chinese energy company linked to the Chinese Communist Party. As every single business entity is in China, When Joe Biden was vice president, Hunter Biden sent a WhatsApp message to one of the associates there, Raymond Zhao, on July 30th, 2017, demanding a $10 million payment. Quote, I am sitting here with my father and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. I am very concerned that the chairman has either changed his mind and broken our deal without telling me or that he is unaware of the promises and assurances that have been made. And have not been kept. And Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows, and my ability to forever hold a grudge, that you will regret not following my direction. And then the money flowed, baby. The money flowed. 877-381-3811. This is the Mark Levin Show. The great one is off tonight. It's me, Rich Zioli, in for Mark. Coming right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. The mayor of Chicago blames, wait for it, yes, right-wing extremists for all the violence in that Democrat-run city. Welcome back to the Mark Levin Show. This is Rich Zioli in for The Great One tonight. The Great One is off. It's great to be with you from Mark's hometown of Philadelphia, 877-381-3811. I do the afternoon drive there, and uh, it's great. Always an honor to fill in whenever Mr. Producer asks me. I jump at the chance to hang out together with my fellow Levinites tonight. We're going to talk about a lot tonight, but I want to turn our attention to Israel because I know it's obviously a topic Mark is incredibly passionate about. And Axios has a story today, according to a scoop, 
Biden warned Bibi Netanyahu that Israel cannot operate in southern Gaza the way it did in the north. He told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu last Sunday that he is concerned about a possible Israeli military operation into southern Gaza after the current pause in fighting ends, according to two U.S. officials. And they are extremely worried that an Israeli operation in the southern Gaza Strip, where two million Palestinians are concentrated, would lead to significantly more civilian casualties and deepen the, quote, I'm reading this from the Axios article here, humanitarian crisis in the enclave. You know what what is uh, amazing about this is that Israel was attacked. It was the biggest, most vile attack against Jews since the Holocaust. And the United States of America is telling them how to fight their war against Hamas. The United States of America, in its arrogance, thinks it can tell Israel, a sovereign nation, how to fight a war. And in the process of doing so is trying to tie Israel's hands behind its back. No question about it. No question about it. And where are all these pictures of all these dead Palestinians and dead children? I mean, what I'm... You cannot believe a word that Hamas says. And yet this Axios article actually says the following. Let me quote this for you. At least 14,800 Palestinians, including 6,000 children, have been killed in Gaza since the war began, according to the Ministry of Health in Hamas-run Gaza. So we're supposed to believe that. We're supposed to believe those numbers. Right. Right. Yeah. No, Israel's just going out there and killing civilians. That's actually what Hamas did. That's not what Israel's doing. Israel is trying to protect civilians. Israel is doing everything it possibly can to protect civilians. Hamas is a terror group that is embedded among the civilian population. And they need to be wiped out because Israel has to wipe them out because Israel was attacked by them. And Hamas is going to keep coming. They're never going to stop. They're never going to stop the fighting. And all these other countries in the region had an opportunity to take refugees, and they would not do it. They would not do it. But these numbers, I have a hard time believing these numbers from the Ministry of Health. The same people that, that lied and said that a hospital was blown up, when actually it was just nothing more than a, a, a rocket by a radical Islamic Hamas-loving terror group landed in the parking lot of a hospital. We were told that day that, what, 500 people died? 500 children in a hospital. We had Rashida Tlaib and Ilan Omar, those vile anti-Semites, crying on the floor of the House of Representatives over Israel bombing a hospital. Remember that lie? Now, the same lie was the lie told by the Ministry of Health in Hamas-run Gaza. So call me a little bit cynical if I don't believe what they're telling me this time around. Behind the scenes, the U.S. officials said Biden's phone call with Netanyahu on Sunday was focused on specifically his concerns about an Israeli operation in the southern Gaza Strip. Biden told Netanyahu that the way Israel operated in northern Gaza, which included a wide assault and three armored and infantry divisions, can't be repeated in the southern part of the enclave because of the millions of Palestinians who are there now. And Netanyahu told Biden it's necessary. The operation in the south is necessary to achieve Israel's goal of destroying Hamas and the Israeli public won't accept stopping the military operation now. Where, where are all the people that scream about American colonialism and America trying to always be the, 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 the boss of the world? Where are all those people now who are screaming? Why are they not screaming and saying, you don't, get a right to, you don't have the right to tell Israel how to fight its battles. You don't have the right to tell a sovereign nation that it needs to eliminate the enemy who wants to see them literally exterminated. The United States of America doesn't get the right to do that. And, you know, of course, in the typical way that Biden does things, of course, he'll tie this all to money. He'll tie it all to money, just like Biden has always in his entire life used politics to enrich himself. He will use U.S. military aid for Israel as the linchpin to try to get them to do whatever he wants and to fight the battle the way he wants them to fight it, which is to not fight it, which is to lose which is to stop fighting. And you have all these Democrats today, the, these, these Democrats, people like Bernie Sanders and others, who are coming out and saying, any aid to Israel must be conditional. Conditional. This is the new thing the Democrat Party's doing right now. Conditional aid to Israel. I'd rather say don't give them the money. I, if I'm Netanyahu, I'd rather say thanks, but no thanks. You keep your money. 
We're not going to take any conditions on this money. We're not going to do that. We thought you were our friend. But if you're going to put conditions on this, we're good. We'll figure it out on our own. We don't, we don't need you. But that's what they want to do. And the reason why, of course, is because the Democrat Party has allowed this anti-Semitism to fester in their ranks for decades on college campuses, within, Democrat, within the Democrat Party. And that's Bernie's base. I mean, that's, that's the base of the Democrat Party right now. They are actively rooting against Israel. And all Israel is doing is trying to fight for its right to exist in the world by wiping out people that attack them and murder their civilians and will keep doing it unless Israel wins this fight. And I have a really hard time with the United States telling another sovereign nation how it has to go about defending itself. I have a really hard time with that. We're not, we're not putting any restrictions on how Zelensky runs the show in Ukraine. We give him all the money they, uh, he wants. You know the difference, though, right? Obviously, is that Joe Biden's corrupted by Ukraine, too. So Zelensky also has the receipts. I mean, I'm sure the receipts are still in the, in the, the drawer of the presidential desk when he moved in the office. So Biden would never dare tell Zelensky how to fight his battles. He'll just keep writing checks. No questions asked. But with Israel, it's different. The Biden crime family didn't do any business with Israel. So Netanyahu doesn't have any receipts. So it's not like Joe Biden has to worry about the extortion that could occur if he tells him no. That's the difference. That's it right there. You know it. I know it. Everybody sees it. Let's talk about it. It's right there in front of you. We're about to give Ukraine more money. And it does not come with any conditions whatsoever. None. In fact, we're, we're, we'll give them whatever they want to fight the battle. Even things that we once called weapons of mass destruction. We'll give it to them. Anything they need, whatever they need. We're not worried about it because Biden wouldn't dare. It's like Biden standing up to China. He would never dare. But Israel is a different story between the fact that the Biden crime family never did business there and also the fact that the Democrat Party hates Israel. Chuck Schumer can stand on the Senate floor today and give a big speech about anti-Semitism, and that's all well and good. But Chuck, this is your party, pal. You're, you're actually what they call preaching to the choir. Only the choir doesn't like your message. It's your people. It's not Republicans. It's Democrats. It's your party. It's your people. It's, it's your lunatic fringe on college campuses. It's your lunatic fringe in corporations. That's your, those are your people, Chuck. So thanks. Thanks for the big speech. But what you really should do is just remember that you have allowed this to occur. You've allowed these people to, to, to grow in your ranks. And you never did a damn thing about it. According to the story from Axios, Biden said on the call he wants the U.S. and Israel to conduct more discussions about the Israeli military's operational plans for southern Gaza ahead of any such operation. And Netanyahu agreed to that. U.S. and Israeli officials said two similar conversations took place in recent days between Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and his Israeli counterpart Yov Gallant. Now, remember when Israel tried to move out over a million Palestinians before the ground invasion began? It, 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 they have tried to do everything they possibly can to protect civilians during this fight. Do you think Hamas gives a damn about protecting civilians? No, they were actively killing them. They were hunting them down and actively killing them. They don't give a damn about civilians. Israel does. And that's the difference. And that's why you should root for them. There's a uh, tweet that Mark put out earlier. He retweeted David Milstein. And a U.S. official says the following. It's not something we're currently pursuing. This is shameful. However, I mean, making the aid conditional to Israel doing and fighting the war the way we want them to. Meanwhile, the article notes Biden's comments are a major shift in the wrong direction. No other commander in chief, albeit welcomed, albeit briefly, the idea of putting restrictions on support for Israel like Joe Biden. It's certainly a change from 2019 when then candidate Biden called the idea of putting conditions on aid to Israel absolutely outrageous. And the anti-Israel Israel wing of the Democrat Party is excited as per usual. It's a significant and welcome shift, said Matt Duss, executive vice president at the Center for International Policy and a former, wait for it, Bernie Sanders foreign policy advisor. Three U.S. officials 
say that Biden will not restrict support for Israel anytime soon. But the Democrats are pressuring the White House in such a way that they may now have to. Biden said it was a worthwhile thought to condition any aid to Israel on how they fight the battle the way he determines the battle to be fought. He suggested that conditioning future military aid to Israel was a worthwhile thought. But then days later, administration officials are shutting down any talk of that happening. Could you imagine if Joe Biden actually does this? I mean, I could see him doing it. This is the problem that Biden has, though. See, he's stuck in a very, very precarious political position right now because he he knows the Democrat Party hates him. He knows the Democrat Party wants him gone. He also knows the Democrat Party doesn't like Israel, hates Israel. So he doesn't know exactly what to do right now. I mean, normally it'd be a, a no brainer. You stand with Israel, you support Israel, you give them the aid, unconditional. And that's that. That's that. But what, what happens then? The phone starts to ring and it's Bernie Sanders on the other end demanding that the aid be conditional. And all the Democrat strategists and all the people around there, they turn around and say, you know, there's a lot of love for the uh, Palestinian people here among the Democrat Party. And so you really should put conditions on this. And you're already losing support among the Democrat Party as they equate Palestinian civilians to Hamas. And do you really want the Democrat Party to turn on you, Mr. President, any more than they already have? The White House's current stance could put the president on a collision course with members of his own party. Senate Democrats on Tuesday met to discuss pressuring the White House on conditionality, with some of Biden's staunchest allies noting he could use current regulations to restrict aid. Quote from Chris Chris Coons of Delaware. There are conditions that are already attached to our aid to a wide range of countries. The conditions that already apply under law are sufficient for this circumstance. The headwinds from Biden's own party have only grown in recent weeks. This month, congressional Democrats first quietly, then publicly came out in support of imposing conditions. And Senator Bernie Sanders was first out of the gate, proposing that Israel not get any more weapons until it stops, quote, the indiscriminate bombing of Gaza and commits to serious peace talks, among other stipulations. Is Bernie doing any of that when it comes to Ukraine, out of curiosity? Nope. He's just going along with whatever checks have to be written. Whatever they need. No problem. All these Democrats are. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? There's no conditions. There's nothing about peace talks. Oh, hey, Ukraine, you want another round of money? Then let's let's sit down at the table. You and Putin and and we'll, 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 we'll broker this before we start writing more checks. We'll see if we can do something about this whole thing. Nope, none of that. Nope, bop, 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 nope. It's outrageous the way the Democrat Party is. And my bet is that Joe Biden, the political pickle that he's in right now, they'll find some way to put restrictions on Israel, even if it means just using existing law. Guarantee Israel will get no money without restrictions. You can bet on it. This is the Mark Levin Show with me, Rich Zioli, in for the great one, coming right back. Mark Levin. You want a deal? I got one for you. Free Moto G5 G phone from Pure Talk. No gimmicks, no trading necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, 15 gig data plan, just 35 bucks, and get the Moto G 5G phone free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones will be gone by the end of the month. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. Enjoy two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, to get this exclusive offer and to select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's slash L-E-V-I-N, to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with qualifying plan. Again, puretalk.com slash Levin, Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. So I guess then the question becomes... How does Joe Biden navigate this with the growing anti-Semitism in the Democrat Party? What does he do? How does he handle this? This this, Let me just show you how crazy Democrats are right now. This is a city council meeting in Oakland, California. All right. This is a video from a city council session in Oakland. It's gone viral. 
over a number of bizarre takes on the Israel-Hamas war. During a City Hall special session on Monday night, Oakland City Council voted for a resolution supporting a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. The resolution calls for the unrestricted entry of humanitarian assistance into Gaza, a demand of respect for international law, and the release of all hostages still held by the Hamas terror organization. While the resolution succeeded with a unanimous vote, the council voted beforehand to reject an amendment proposed by council member Dan Kalb. That amendment, which failed with a 6-2 vote, would have expressly condemned international terrorism and Hamas. That motion failed. To condemn Hamas and their instigation of the war with the atrocities they committed on October 7th. This is from that council. This is from that, that city council meeting. Cut number five, Mr. Producer. There's not been beheadings of babies and rapings. Israel murdered their own people on October 7th. Calling Hamas a terrorist organization is ridiculous, racist, and plays into genocidal propaganda that is flooding our media and that we should be doing everything possible to combat. I support the right of Palestinians to resist occupation, including through Hamas, the armed wing of the unified Palestinian resistance. As an Arab, asking with this context to condemn Hamas is very anti-Arab racist. The notion that this was a massacre of Jews is a fabricated narrative. Many of those killed on October Thank 7th, you, ma'am. Your time is up. including children, were killed by the IDF. An amendment condemning Hamas is bald propaganda meant to... Thank you. Your time is up. To hear them complain about Hamas violence is like listening to a wife beater complain when his wife finally stands up and fights back. Question. Did anyone else notice that those who oppose this resolution are old white supremacists? There's been a lot of atrocity propaganda ranging from claims of beheaded babies to mass rape. Hamas is not a terrorist organization just because the U.S. and Israel um, deems it so. Hamas is a resistance organization that is fighting for the liberation of Palestinian people and their land. You hear that now? Hamas is a, is a they're, they're freedom fighters. Freedom fighters. This is the Democrat Party. Every single one of those people that spoke at that city council meeting, they're all lefty kooks. Every single one of them. This is the Democrat Party. So Chuck Schumer, spare us with the speeches, pal. Those speeches given by those people say everything. This is the Mark Levin Show. It's me, Rich, in for Mark. We're coming right back. You want a deal? I got one for you. Free Moto G 5G phone from Pure Talk. No gimmicks, no trading necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, 15 gig data plan, just 35 bucks, and get the Moto G 5G phone free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones will be gone by the end of the month. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. Enjoy two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, to get this exclusive offer and to select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's slash L-E-V-I-N, to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with qualifying plan. Again, puretalk.com slash Levin, Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Mark Levin, the cure for the common liberal. Talk to Mark now at 877-381-3811. As all of this is being played out, and welcome back to the Mark Levin Show. It is me, Rich Zeolian, for the great one. He'll be back tomorrow night, which is good, obviously. Uh, As all this is, is happening, and you hear all those people who are calling Hamas freedom fighters and everything else, and you have the Democrats, people like Bernie Sanders and others, who are out there, you also have the Queers for Palestine movement going on. No, this is a real thing. And the Jerusalem Post has a piece about this. Uh, Queers for Palestine shows just how stupid our society is. In a recent interview with Unheard, prominent ex-Muslim author and activist Ayan Hirsi Ali slams the Queers for Palestine movement. It was an exclusive interview with Unheard, and this story came from the, the Jerusalem Post. And she's a columnist, and she slammed the pro-Palestinian sub-movement known as Queers for Palestine. Palestine. They spoke on a wide range of subjects, including topics such as the Israel-Hamas war, pro-Palestinian protesters, anti-Semitism, liberalism, immigration, etc. The latter portion of the interview was opened up to a question and answer segment involving live audience in attendance. So one of the audience members asked, what she made of pro-Palestinian protesters using slogans such as queers for Palestine. 
And that's actually a thing. That's actually a real thing that really happened on nutty college campuses in America. Now, the answer here is spot on. It would be funny, you know, it's just material for comedy if it wasn't so stupid. And she then went on to highlight the lack of acceptance for LGBTQ plus people in fundamental Islamic societies. The Islamic Republic of Iran is in place. Hamas was actually governing Gaza. And what were they doing to homosexuals? She asked. They throw them from tall buildings, she said. Families, if you're a Muslim family and within your family, there's someone who's suspected of being gay. It's the obligation of the family to commit honor killing. So it doesn't even go as far as the government and tribunals and trials. But when that happens, it's done quite publicly and it's done in the most gruesome fashion. So Queers for Palestine, I think, is just another manifestation of how our society has just become really, really stupid. Yeah, no, I mean, this is this is again, this is what I mean, about how the disconnect between what goes on in nutty college campuses, which is really every college campus in America right now. You've got people there, you know, rainbow queers for Hamas and whatnot. These people would kill them in a heartbeat. They don't want them even being allowed to speak in public. There's no freedom. There's nothing other than hatred for anyone who does not live by their lifestyle. That's it. That's the only thing you have to know. And yet, when people are brainwashed into believing that, that Hamas is the victim, they're the good guys here, they're, they're the freedom fighters, they're, they're fighting for freedom for the Palestinian people. When, when you are conditioned to believe that over and over again by the indoctrination that occurs, when you hear all those people from that city council meeting saying that, these are freedom fighters. What, 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 what do you mean? To condemn Hamas is to condemn freedom fighters. You hear that and it makes your head spin, right? Except it shouldn't make your head spin. And the reason why is because this is exactly who they are. This is exactly who the left is. The left, I, they have to find a victim always. They have to find some group that they feel is being oppressed. And then when that happens, that's it. They just simply go in that direction and nobody can challenge them on this. Nobody. Harvard University is now under investigation by the Department of Education over anti-Semitism on campus. I saw this from the post-millennial. It's just one of many schools, K through 12 and post-secondary alike, being investigated by the Department of Education over their handling of anti-Jewish hate. The Office of Civil Rights within the Department of Education is opening a probe into Harvard University over claims that officials at the Ivy League institution failed to properly address allegations of anti-Semitism on campus. Harvard is just one of many schools, K through 12 and post-secondary alike, being investigated by their handling of discrimination in the weeks since Hamas launched a terror attack against Israel on October 7th. Here's the letter that was sent by chief attorney for the Office of Civil Rights at the Department of Education that was sent over to Fox News. The U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights, see if I can get this, Christy R. Harris, chief attorney, said they'll be opening an investigation to whether Harvard failed to respond to alleged harassment of students based on their national origin shared Jewish ancestry and or Israeli ancestry in a matter consistent with requirements of Title VI. Quote, please note that opening the complaint for investigation in no way implies that the Office of Civil Rights has made a determination on the merits of the complaint. During the investigation, the Office of Civil Rights is a neutral fact finder, collecting and analyzing relevant evidence from you, the university, and other sources as appropriate. Our goal is the prompt resolution of the complaint. Noting that the complaint can be resolved before the conclusion of the investigation or through mediation with the university. I'll tell you what's going to happen with this. Absolutely freaking nothing. Because this is Biden's Department of Education. You think they're actually going to do a real investigation into anti-Semitism on college campuses or in K-12 through schools? Absolutely not. Of course not. First of all, these are all their people. These are all their same people who are in those universities, and they all, it's a revolving door between government and, and, and the Ivy League. It's a revolving, I should say, government, but in particular when the Democrats are in charge. And the other, the other thing, too, is that they, I mean, there's too much money involved with Harvard for them to actually be guilty of covering up the anti-Semitism that's going on in those campuses. There's just too, there's too much money involved. There's too many rich donors. There's too many rich donors who also write checks to the Democrat Party. 
they don't want to see Harvard get called out. So nothing's going to actually occur in this whole thing. Nothing. Nothing. You know, the other point, too, that I think is very much important to note regarding what's happening on, on college campuses right now is that you have a lot of people on these campuses who consider themselves to be feminists. They're feminists, right? Except when a man is playing on a women's sports team, then that's, that's you know, forget, I mean, that's, you know, that's fine. If a man identifies as a woman and plays on a women's sports team in college and then beats the women, beats the girls at swimming or whatever, that's okay. But otherwise, these are people on college campuses who stand for the rights of women. Even biological men who then beat them at their own game. They st- as long as they, those biological men say that they identify as a woman, then the same feminist will then cheer them on, you know? It's like that little boy, that little boy, what a shameful thing that happened to him. Deadspin did this story of this little kid, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs game, and he had his face painted uh, half red, half black for the Chiefs colors, and he had a Native American headdress on, and the Deadspin writer only showed the picture of the little boy's half of his face, which showed it black, and he then proceeded to shame this little boy, who's there for Monday Night Football with his family, probably having the time of his life. He right, gets dressed up, Chiefs jersey, headdress on, he's got the face painted, he's all excited, and then the next day, this woke writer for Deadspin shames this kid and maligns him as a racist in front of the entire country. Oh, thank God nobody actually reads Deadspin, but because conservatives actually criticized what they did about this kid, people heard about it. But this vile reporter went, goes after this child, a minor, by the way, and puts his picture on social media and then demands the NFL do something. And he brandishes this kid as a racist and says that the fact that a young kid like this feels confident wearing blackface is a sign of how America has accepted the racism of Donald Trump and how that racism has become the norm that now kids are walking around feeling entitled to wear blackface. Like it's a minstrel show from the vaudeville era. Except the kid had the other half of his face painted red. They just didn't show that in the Deadspin article because it would have taken away from the narrative. Oh, and also the kid's Native American. In fact, his um, his uncle, or maybe it's his grandpa, serves on the, the council for the local Native American group that's there. Whatever the, the, I don't know if tribe is the right word, he serves on the council of that. So the kid's Native American, so he's wearing was something which is a cultural artifact of his people, and he has his face painted, and he's having a great time. And he gets maligned as a racist and gets maligned as, a, as, as being also anti-Native American. It's shocking. And the mom comes out and says, you know what? The kid, he's Native American. Give it a, a freaking break already. Give it a rest. But this is what the left does. And if that little boy had gone to that game dressed up as a Native American princess, like if he had gone to that game dressed as Pocahontas based on the Disney movie, and if he had gone there with the Pocahontas costume and dressed up like that, and that writer had shamed him at that point, her, for wearing a Native American costume as a princess, he'd lose his job because the kid should be absolutely encouraged if he's transgender to dress up as a girl, even if that girl is wearing um, her face painted and in Native American headgear. See, the left is insane. They're, they're insane with their standards and their, and their hypocrisy on all these things. Kid wears a Native American headdress, he's a racist. Kid shows up at a game, he's a boy, dresses as a, as a girl, you criticize that, and you're a vile, intolerant bigot. Kid's Native American, he wears a cultural artifact of his people, he has his face painted half red, half black. Do you think Deadspin offers an apology? Nope. You think they ever will? Absolutely not. They don't have to. The left never has to apologize. It's like Rolling Stone Magazine is a great example. You remember when Rolling Stone Magazine did that big profile, a rape on campus, where they talked about a woman who was brutally gang raped on the campus of UVA, only it never happened. They shamed all of these fraternity bo- members as being a bunch of bros and rapists and all these horrible things were said about them. And it ne- never happened. It was true. It was a fugazi, as my people say. It was fake. It did not happen. But is Rolling Stone out of business today? Nope. Deadspin maligns this poor little boy, this child, who's just enjoying the game, 
Do they show the whole story? Do they apologize? Do they walk it back? Nope. Not at all. They don't have to. The left never has to apologize if they get it wrong. Never. And so all these groups out there on campus, you know, all these women who are saying they're, they're feminists, these pro-feminist groups out there, why are they not condemning Hamas? Why are they not condemning Hamas? Well, you got to hear this clip. This is Sarah Hendricks, who's the deputy executive director for UN Women, who spoke with CNN anchor Brianna Goladriga this week and had a tough line of questioning regarding the UN's refusal to condemn Hamas for using systemic rape and sexual violence as a weapon during the devastating attack on Israel. Cuts a little long, but it's worth it. Believe me, this word salad of this person who cannot condemn Hamas for raping women cut six. Is there a reason, though, Sarah, that you can't specifically call out Hamas and the mounting evidence now over seven weeks that Israeli investigators have collected that we've shown our viewers about the atrocities they committed specifically on October 7th? Because I think that's the crux of the issue here. It's not just condemning sexual violence against women and in any war in general. It's specifically what occurred on October 7th perpetrated by Hamas. Indeed. UN Women always supports impartial, independent investigations into any serious allegations of gender-based or sexual violence. And within the UN family, these investigations are led by the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights. And just to provide a little bit of context in terms of UN Women's role, UN Women specifically provides and has extensive knowledge on gender-based violence and provides and supports investigations as we do with all UN investigations. And so consequently, in this context and within the UN system, it is the Independent International Commission of Inquiry, which for us has the mandate to investigate all alleged violations. It is absolutely important for the rights, for the needs, for the protection, for the dignity, uh, for the survivors of violence to be supported throughout a process. Let's stop and it right there for a we... second, Rich, if we could. This is, think of this word salad. Now, she asked her, will you condemn Hamas? And then she proceeds to give the mission statement of her organization. This is what's called dodging and deflecting. It, you, you just say a bunch of words that mean nothing just to fill space and time, hoping to distract the person so they forget the question that they asked you, which is, do you support Will you condemn Hamas for rapes? Will you condemn Hamas? There's more to this. I'll play it on the other side, but it's worth hearing. And this is where we are right now. But don't you love that? A jumbled word salad where all she does is give the mission statement of the organization. We didn't ask you the mission statement of the organization. We asked you, will you condemn Hamas for brutally raping women on October 7th? Yes or no? Very easy question. Should have taken a five second answer. It's the Mark Levin Show. We're coming right back. Mark Levin. You want a deal? I got one for you. Free Moto G 5G phone from Pure Talk. No gimmicks, no trading necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, 15 gig data plan, just 35 bucks, and get the Moto G 5G phone free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones will be gone by the end of the month. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. Enjoy two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, to get this exclusive offer and to select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's slash L-E-V-I-N, to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with qualifying plan. Again, puretalk.com slash Levin, Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. So let's continue, shall we, with that nutbag? From the United Nations. So again, the question from Brianna Goldriga from CNN was very, very simple. It was, will you condemn the atrocious rapes by Hamas on October 7th? Right. So will you condemn the rapes that Hamas committed against Jews on October 7th? And this person, Sarah Hendricks, who's the deputy executive director for UN Women, proceeds to then give a long, blabbering word salad that says nothing, which is the idea of word salads, by the way. There's no nutritional value whatsoever. 
It's intended to just distract you from the fact that they're not going to actually answer the question. They're just blah, 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 word, 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 word. Anyway, let's pick it up from where we were. And that's why we work through these globally mandated mechanisms. That notwithstanding, we understand and certainly we encourage and support national level efforts. The ones that you've heard about today, the civil commission in Israel, which has brought together women's organizations to document gender-based atrocities impartially. Um, our work will be on the backside of the independent international commission. So there you go. They're, they're, they're going to, um, to document things. They're going to document. Uh, document. The, the question was, will you condemn Hamas? Nope. She's part of the United Nations. They won't condemn Hamas. Because think of how many people within the UN hate Israel and also believe that Hamas are freedom fighters. And hey, listen, if you're a freedom fighter and you know you got to rape people, well, it's freedom. You know, it's a freedom fighter. And so you're just doing what you got to do as a freedom fighter, I guess. How many of these um, these groups on campus, the the rainbow groups, you know, the the the, the groups who have little acronyms and letters, and how many of them will condemn Hamas for raping women? No, they won't. I mean. Cheryl Sandberg, I give her credit. She wrote a piece about this saying that we need to call out Hamas for their treatment of women. We need to call this out and we need to say what they did. And the world needs to say what they did and let it be known what, what happened here. And I don't mean just documenting it. I don't mean some U.N. windbag documenting it. I mean, condemn it, condemn it and say what happened. But that's the problem. They don't want to acknowledge it happened. They don't want to acknowledge it happened because in their crazy leftist mind hamas are just freedom fighters here fighting for the palestinian people so they won't acknowledge it they won't condemn it how do you condemn something you can't acknowledge happened how do you condemn something if you will not even acknowledge it took place and if you listen to that word salad what you find there is you find her saying that our job is to document investigate look around blah 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 she won't condemn it she won't even acknowledge it took place she won't acknowledge that Hamas was brutally raping women. So how can she condemn Hamas raping women if she won't acknowledge that they even did? And that is the United Nations for you right there. There it is. Hour number three of the Mark Levin Show with me, Rich Zioli, coming straight ahead. Don't go away. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from the underground command post in the bowels of a hidden bunker somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building we've once again made contact with our leader mark levin so i guess the question is now that china has a new pandemic this this uh, pneumonia sweeping the country with masks and lockdowns coming back when does it come to america Probably just in time for the presidential election. Welcome back to the show. Glad you're here. It is the Mark Levin Show. The great one is off tonight. He will be back tomorrow. It is me, Rich Zioli, from Mark's hometown of Philadelphia, where I broadcast on 1210 WPHD. I do the afternoon drive show there on Twitter, or X as they call it now, at Rich Zioli, Z-E-O-L-I, for those of you that are not Italian in the audience. And uh, I keep thinking about what's happening in China right now. I keep thinking about the fact that back in October of 2019, Dan Briette was the energy secretary. And he was on my show a bunch of times because Philadelphia, obviously, Pennsylvania is a is a huge energy state. And unlike the previous administration, President Trump actually cared about making America energy independent and secure. Unlike this administration, President Trump actually realized the potential and didn't try to destroy America's energy independence. He tried to increase it. And that meant things like supporting natural gas, which is a huge thing in Pennsylvania. And the idea of a liquid natural gas transfer station where we could sell our natural gas across the world. Instead, Vladimir Putin is selling his natural gas to France and I think Belgium and certainly Spain. And they've been buying more and more of it. We could sell our oil. We could sell our ga natural gas. We could we could have our coal. We could do all those things. When Trump was president, those things were happening in the state of Pennsylvania. It was great. It was wonderful. And Dan Briette would come on my show all the time and talk about all the new energy initiatives that the administration was taking. Well, the war on coal stopped as soon as Trump got into the Oval Office. Remember before that, you had Hillary Clinton going out there and going. She, she would talk to coal miners. You know, she'd go to places and in Pennsylvania and others, these towns that were 
watching uh, this war on coal and then being destroyed systemically by the Democrat Party and their green agenda. And she'd go there and she'd talk about the transformation of their jobs to laying broadband cable. And she'd sit there and she'd say, I know, Bo, I know it's hard, but we're going to make sure that you land on your feet doing broadband cable. And she put on that phony accent. She'd be speaking to people in West Virginia, just b- belittling them, humiliating them, you know. All that stopped when Trump became president. It was great. It was wonderful. And Dan Briette would come on and come on the show as Mr. Secretary, you know, as Deputy Energy Secretary, Mr. Secretary. Let's talk about the latest energy initiatives. Well, it turns out in 2019, the Department of Energy released a report to Fauci's National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases. And in that report, they said that in the Wuhan Institute of Virology, the WIV, at that lab, China was tinkering with these coronaviruses and that the Chinese military was involved. And this, was a, this should have been a huge warning flag to the United States. This, should, this cable should have been something that was handled immediately. Instead, what did Fauci's group do? They buried it. Why? Because they were the ones paying for it. That's why. They were the ones paying for the gain-of-function research. Prior to coronavirus research, where they were creating new strains of coronavirus to be deadlier, and obviously, and I still believe, there's a very strong likelihood COVID-19 was, in fact, a bioweapon created by the Chinese government. And do I think that maybe they had a motivation in unleashing it before the 2020 presidential election? Damn right I do. Think about it. Trump was going after China and actually holding China accountable. He was imposing tariffs on China. He was pushing China to stop their currency manipulation, stop the intellectual property theft, and cut the crap when it came to their encroachment on the South China Sea. And Joe Biden worked for them. So who'd you rather have in the White House, huh? A guy who's busting your chops or a guy who works for you? Easy answer, in my opinion. I mean... On the one hand, you got a guy who's actually holding you accountable and cracking down and not letting you take over the entire world. On the other hand, you have a guy who's on your payroll. Literally, Joe Biden is on China's payroll. Who are you going to pick? Hmm? I know, tough, tough choice right there, right? So now, the virus is unleashed in the fall of 2019 during the World Military Games. China doesn't care if they lose a couple million people. They have a population issue. Like all communist regimes, they can't feed their people because communism doesn't work. So if they lose a couple people here and there, millions, it doesn't matter. But they unleash this virus in the world. Or maybe it was an accident. It just walked out of the lab on its own. Either way, do I think there's a motivation behind trying to use this as a way to bring the United States down to its knees to then hurt Donald Trump's reelection? You're damn right I do. 100%. Absolutely. And think of what it did. It achieved that goal. We wound up buying more things from China. We, we were economically harmed because all of these Democrats around the country just couldn't help themselves but jump up and down and scream about lockdowns and kids can't be in school and you can't go to these businesses, but you can go to these businesses and you can only have 10 people in a restaurant, but not 12. And so we took enormous economic harm. Our children had enormous learning disadvantages where they are still set back for years in reading and math. I had to fight for my own daughter, my own daughter, who uh, she has a what's an educational thing that she's a little behind in. So we had to get her a mask exemption. And you the, the fight that my family had to go through just to get her a mask exemption. In the state of New Jersey was infuriating. Well, there's a new study that came out in the United Kingdom and the stringent lockdown measures implemented worldwide during the COVID-19 pandemic have been found to significantly affect the working memory and cognitive function of older individuals. Maybe this is Joe Biden's problem. Maybe he was just locked down too much, spent too much time in his basement during COVID. And there's a concern now about elevated risks of dementia, according to this comprehensive UK study. Researchers in the UK delved into neuropsychology data from over 3,100 individuals age 50 and above This is from Zero Hedge, examining cognitive health trends before and after the first two years of the pandemic. The findings drawn from the PROTECT study, it's a longitudinal aging initiative conducted online by the University of Exeter and King's College London in collaboration with the National Health Service, revealed striking impacts on the cognitive abilities of the participants. 
They looked at 1,700 women and over 1,400 men. The average age was 67 and a half years old. And the study, which spanned from March of 2019 to February 2022, encompassed the tumultuous period that you and I know as full societal lockdowns, something that these people in particular had never experienced before. You're 67 and a half years old or 70 years old. Older than that, 75. You never experienced lockdowns before. You weren't locked down. I mean, unless you survived, unless you were old enough to survive it's like the, the smallpox lockdowns of the turn of the century, you, chances are you never experienced anything like this. And what did they find? They found very negative things. Substantial decline in executive function. A marked decline in working memory. Significant worsening of executive function and working memory was observed in the first year of the pandemic across the whole cohort. And the cognitive decline. And remember, Joe Biden did spend that entire year campaigning in his basement. The fact that amid lockdowns, people were exercising less, they were consuming more alcohol. They contributed, these factors contributed to more people experiencing loneliness and depression. Oh, sure. And they couldn't see their loved ones. For some of them, they had to say goodbye to the person that they were married with for 50 years by standing outside and watching it on a computer. Because they couldn't go to the hospital and say goodbye to the person that they just spent their life with. I mean, horrific things were done. Horrific things to people. And of course, don't forget what was done to the nursing homes and people of that age in nursing homes, including veterans nursing homes, where they were purposely just left to die by this insane public policy where they took no precautions whatsoever with the most vulnerable population. A 2020 Lancet Commission highlighted that lifestyle and mental health factors are major contributors to cognitive health and risk factors can be controlled, contributing to 40 percent of dementia cases. Lockdowns drastically changed the lifestyle of millions, led to increased use of alcohol, a reduction in physical activity and an increase in sedentary behavior. Well, sure. I mean, during that time, you probably binge watched a lot, drank a lot, ate bad food and hoped it would end. But particularly for people in that age group where they may not have had access to family and friends and there wasn't a job, they didn't have a job to go to every day. I mean, at least at least for most of us, we were able to get online and work remotely or do the show, my, my case, do my show remotely. I mean, we could do those things and be around people and still feel like we have a function. But if you don't feel like you have a function and no purpose and you can't be around your loved ones and you can't see your grandkids and you can, you're not allowed to do those things and you're alone. You can't go to the, whatever groups you were part of, VFW, American Legion, whatever the groups were, bingo night, whatever. You can't do any of those things. You're on your own. You're by yourself. And what happens? The brain begins to further degrade. And you can't go to gyms. You were not allowed to go to gyms. Exercises, that was not allowed. You could go, you could buy fast food and booze and cigarettes, obviously, but you couldn't go to a gym. Couldn't work out. That was too risky. Heck, in some cases, you couldn't even take a walk on the beach. Public parks were closed. Do you remember all this? I mean, we try to forget because it was so terrible. But the reason why I bring it up again is don't discount the fact that it seems like these pandemics in China. Well, first of all, they always seem to come from China, number one. And I would nothing, nothing would surprise me in any way, shape or form if we are dealing with something like this next year. And you watch what's happening in China right now and you're turning around and going, they're masking up. How bad is this thing? How, and this is about the same time that it happened in 2019. According to The Sun, they say, China orders mystery pneumonia, out, mystery pneumonia outbreak cover-up as officials are told to downplay illness and ban the word COVID. The new wave of pneumonia has swept through China and forced the country to bring back face masks and social distancing. I would love to know if this was something that they made in the WIV, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, I'd love to know. You'd love to know. And wouldn't you love to know if the Chinese military was involved in any of this? But again, we will never get answers on this. There will not be a, a travel ban from China because Joe Biden works for them. He's the guy. He's their guy. He's on the payroll. He's on the books. I shared that story with you in the, I think it was the first hour of the Mark Levin show. The show's flying by. All this money that ended up in Joe Biden's pocket as a repayment by his brother, James, this loan repayment, all started in China. It originated in China. 
And then it was washed and laundered through various different ways until it eventually ended up in the pockets of Joe Biden. They have the receipts. Joe Biden will never, ever, ever stand up to China, period. And if this is turning out to be another pandemic, if this is something China created, we'll never get the truth with this president. Never. And I'll tell you one thing. If it will benefit keeping the guy on payroll in office, do I think China is motivated to try something again? Oh, absolutely. 877-381-3811. This is the Mark Levin Show. And it's me, Rich Zeolian, for the great one. Coming right back. Mark Levin. All right. We continue along here on the Mark Levin Show. You can follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Rich Zioli. I still call it Twitter. I just It's hard for me to call it X and not think I'm talking about something that's completely inappropriate. All right, I'm going to try some calls here. Hopefully this is pretty accurate. I had a little technical issue hooking up to the call screen. But let's try this. Let's, let's do our best here. Let's see how we do. Renee is calling from Arizona. Renee, it's me, Rich, in for the great one. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for taking my call, sir. I can prove that Trump... When he warned us about the swamp, I can prove it's real and it's running Kingman, Arizona. I can prove it. I have all the proof like Q, but my name's Renee Cranin. And I can prove that Judge Van Arsdale, that Judge Singer is corrupt, that former city prosecutor Megan Berhalen, who now works in Flagstaff, is corrupt. I can prove there is... All right. Well, listen, I, I'm sure you can, and I appreciate the call, Renee, but we, we can't have... We can't, we can't do this at this present time, but I, I'm, I'm sure you can prove all that. Uh, David is in Staten Island, New York. David, how are you? Oh, he's gone. Okay. How about Patrick? Is Patrick there? Patrick is there. Patrick, you are on the Mark Levin show. How are you, sir? Patrick, are you there? Oh, no, Patrick. All right. We'll try one more here. Let's try Brian in Clarion, Pennsylvania, my adopted state of Pennsylvania since I live in Jersey, but broadcast out of Philadelphia. Brian, you're on the Mark Levin show. Hello. Thank you. I'm a former Bucks County boy. So I appreciate when you're a guest host, I enjoy listening to you. Um, I have a tongue in cheek question for you about your uh, talking about the Biden surveillance program for Americans. Um, But I just wanted to make a quick comment on Israel, if I could. I'm hoping that Israel's diplomatic negotiations with European support, namely Great Britain and France, will work until President Trump can be reelected to the White House. Biden screwed Great Britain with the Afghanistan withdrawal, leaving British subjects high and dry, and he screwed France by pulling the plug on the nuclear sub, uh, sub, uh, submarine program. So hopefully they will come to the aid of Israel. But my tongue-in-cheek question is, I fly uh, the colonial flag with the Gatson flag, the don't tread on me. Sure, yeah. We also fly, you know, we also fly the Jolly Roger with the 2020 Trump flag to mm-hmm. remind our community of what I like to call the judicial atrocities surrounding January 6th. And we fly the Trump flag. We also fly the Israel flag. But here's my tongue-in-cheek question. My husband and I are both gay Republicans, and we also fly the rainbow flag, which means that we are proud members of America. We support the freedoms of America. We appreciate the rights that the gay community over the decades has earned from society as well as the legalities. And I'm hoping, do you think that that will protect us from being under surveillance? (laughs) (laughs) No chance. No chance. That rainbow flag does not cancel out everything else you have. (laughs) <laughs> oh well and what well, you just... should do is put like a put like an ar-15 on the rainbow flag and really get them going <laughs> could i make a comment on your pneumonia talk about china i gotta i gotta run i'm up against the break but thank you for the call and you have a wonderful night and appreciate you listening to the mark levin show uh it is me rich in for the great one these hard breaks what are you gonna do it's a national show baby i gotta follow the clock and the clock ticks but when i come back 
you know that George Soros cut a $250,000 check to an anti-Israel charity accused of Hamas terror ties? Hmm? Straight ahead. More logic than allowed by law. The Mark Levin Show. Call now at 877-381-3811. You know, George Soros is a vile human being. He really is. Vile human being. One of the absolute worst of the worst. Welcome back to the Mark Levin Show. It is me, Rich Zioli, in for the great one. He will be back with you tomorrow night, so do not worry. George Soros, who, of course, uh, you know, gave the Nazis a hand. What are you going to do? George Soros is now giving money to an anti-Israel group that has been accused of funding Hamas and other Palestinian terror factions. And that group received a boost from George Soros before helping to lead protests across the United States against the Jewish state. The Soros-backed foundation to promote open society, a major liberal grant maker in the billionaire Open Society Foundation's empire, steered $250,000 in 2022 to Education for Just Peace in the Middle East, a charity that has reportedly fiscally sponsored the Palestinian boycott, divestment, and sanctions national committee, according to a newly released grant records. The same charity which is also known as the U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights, is one of several pro-ceasefire rally organi- organizations sympathizing with Hamas. This is from the Washington Examiner. The Soros tied cash transfer appears to undercut efforts by the philanthropists to oppose anti-Semitism, which has surged by at least 400% in the United States according, since October 7th, according to the Anti-Defamation League. Soros' organization also granted $450,000 to this education for just peace in the Middle East. And um, their national conference was notably canceled by a Hilton hotel in October after a Washington Examiner report on how squad member Rashida Tlaib, another vile person, was set to deliver the keynote speech. The anti-Israel network was revealed by Tablet in 2018 to sponsor the BDS National Committee, which which counts the Council of National and Islamic Forces in Palestine as a member. According to the BDS committee website, in turn, the council has included U.S. designated terror groups such as the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Hamas, Palestinian Liberation Front, all as part of its membership. According to the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs think tank and the U.S. State Department. This may have allowed this organization to facilitate tax exempt donations to foreign political entities, possibly in violation of IRS laws governing fiscal sponsorship, said Benjamin Baird, who's the director of the Middle East Forum Action, which is a watchdog which tracks terror tied nonprofit groups. The foundation to promote open society's grant to the anti Israel network was for general support, while a prior grant was to expand the grantees' organizing support for national partners and to upgrade their communications capacity in order to promote freedom, justice, and equality in a world without racism and oppression. Well, obviously, you know, from the mind of a, of a leftist like George Soros, the Palestinian people are oppressed by Israel, and so therefore, whatever Hamas and all the other lunatic groups are trying to do, these terrorists, to destroy Israel, it's justified. Even if they're, on, even if they're designated terror groups by the United States of America, they're just freedom fighters, you see. Wow. So, as you think about everything that's going on, you know, the, the last caller made a joke about all the different flags he has. Because I opened the show today by telling you this story about uh, how if you ever interacted with Donald Trump on Twitter in any, in any way, any sh- way, shape, or form, they're going to get your data. They're going to get your data. The political brief had this story, how attorneys for the United States Department of Justice have revealed documents connected to their search warrant for Donald Trump's Twitter account. And they want to collect a massive amount of data about the former president's social media activity, including information on every account that liked, followed, or retweeted him. So think about it. Uh, If you flew into the United States Capitol region on January 6, 2021, the high holy day of the left, where they hope every day is January 6th, if you flew in, but you didn't even go to the Capitol, let alone do anything bad that day, you just went, maybe you had a funeral, maybe a job interview, maybe just to see friends or something like that. Doesn't matter. 
you're being monitored by air marshals, your name's on a list, you're a possible domestic violent extremist. Doesn't matter if you were even in the building of the Capitol. Doesn't matter if you were even in the District of Columbia. Doesn't, doesn't matter. It certainly doesn't matter if you did anything wrong. When does that get in the way? When do, when do you have to have done something wrong for the government to start monitoring you and surveilling you and spying on you? Well, if you ever interacted with Trump on Twitter, guess what? You did something very, very wrong here, apparently, I guess, because now the government's going to have your information, which also includes my information, too. Because as part of this, they're demanding all users that the subject account, which is Trump, have all users that the subject account has followed, unfollowed, muted, unmuted. I believe he follows Mr. Producer, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that the former president, is that true, Mr. Producer? Um, well, he should, because it's a fantastic ride. I'll tell you that. All users that the subject account has followed, unfollowed, muted, unmuted, blocked or unblocked, and all users who have followed, unfollowed, muted, unmuted, blocked or unblocked Donald Trump. Twitter appears to have provided the Department of Justice with vast volumes of material under compulsion. Indeed, special counsel Jack Smith sought and appears to have gotten information on all users Trump followed, unfollowed, muted, unmuted, blocked or unblocked, as well as all users who followed, unfollowed, muted, unmuted, blocked or unblocked Trump. So there you go. The government's going to have access to all of your data. Why is my question. Why, why, why does the government need access to your data? The answer is because obviously you might be a domestic violent extremist. So they got to they gotta have the information. Duh. The, the, the erosion of civil liberties in this country, you know, long before Dinesh D'Souza came out with this police state movie, I, I, I was calling America police state for years. Because, you know, the definition of a police state, it's not cops on horseback. It's not cops using tear gas to deal with uh, a, a violent protest. Those things are police tactics. No, what a police state is, is when the government uses its law enforcement for political purposes. And we got a whole lot of federal law enforcement in this country. You may have noticed. And when they use that for political purposes, either to help their friends or to punish their enemies, or to monitor the citizens who they don't like, who might be a threat to them. And I don't mean a physical threat, but a threat's a threat nonetheless in their eyes. So if you're a threat by exposing the truth, well, that's just as bad. And they use their law enforcement powers, their national security powers for political purposes. That is literally the textbook definition of a police state. That is what America has become. That is where we are. And that is what, how it's going to get a thousand times worse if Joe Biden's reelected. A thousand times worse. Because they love the power over us. They love the power over us. By the way, follow Mr. Producer at Rich Cementa on Twitter. It's an excellent ride. I'm telling you right now. It's a must follow account. And you can follow me on Twitter at Rich Zioli if you like as well. Let me go to uh, Susan is in upstate New York and she is on the Mark Levin show. Hello, Susan. Hey there. You've done a great job tonight of uh, really connecting the dots on the Biden, um, you know, comprom how he's compromised to China and other countries and to our decline and the danger that we're in from the police state that is upon us. Uh, and you were speaking about the uh, so this new so-called pandemic, which also there is something in Europe, supposedly some kind of a swine flu, um, but that there was a biotech lab uh, found in California, which has been swept under the uh, carpet, the FBI and the CDC so-called investigated. But the the, the threat I, I heard today, but Frank Gaffney was speaking from the, uh, you know, his um, Chinese, um, uh, he, he has an organization that follows China very closely, I, um, that there's potentially um, they're estimating 100,000 Chinese nationals have come through the border and are in this country and are, you know, very dangerously ready to potentially 
uh, do some uh, cyber attacks, uh, uh, just attacks. I mean, a hundred thousand of them. When you think mm-hmm. only, however, a little, a dozen, what they did on nine eleven. Um, so. Well, Susan, look, I'll say this, and, and thank you so much for the call. I, I appreciate it very, very much and for the nice uh, compliment. I'll say this. You don't even have to be in the United States of America to to try to do the uh, the hacking of our infrastructure and all the other things. There's no question about that. But look, we have a wide open southern border. We know that people on the on the terror watch list, the, the real terror watch list, not the fake terror watch list that they put Trump supporters on, but the real one have come into this country illegally. We know that. I mean, we absolutely we know that. And let me tell you what Republicans are about to do. Just so you know, the little game it's about to be played in order for them to get more funding for Ukraine, the perpetual blank check because Ukraine has the goods on Joe Biden. I mean, let's face it. The guy is corrupt by Ukraine, Russia, China. And don't forget Romania. All right. I'm not going to let you forget Romania. They may be the lesser of the countries, but they still there's payments from them, too. Don't you forget it. Don't forget Russia also paid off the Bidens. Let's not forget that. So the perpetual check, in order to get them to go along with that, they're going to, and the White House demands that it has to accompany aid to Israel and also humanitarian aid, I'm using air quotes, uh, for Gaza. They will put in some watered down, weak need border language, which will do nothing to actually secure the border, by the way, nothing. And that's the compromise. That's what they'll do to give Republicans the ability, who, who are all in on giving Ukraine whatever it wants forever and ever with no stipulations whatsoever. They'll do that to give them the cover they need to go back to their district and say, well, I had no choice. And I really hope that the Speaker of the House rejects this idea of lumping all of this aid together. These things deserve up or down votes, separate and apart from each other, up or down votes, period. That's what they require. I'm sorry, but it it should be a requirement. And don't fall for the Democrats game and the rhinos game of saying, well, but look, you got You got a border bill in here that changes up some language surrounding amnesty. That's all it does. Changes up a legal definition, which, by the way, is going to be rejected by court by by a liberal judge anyway. So don't fall for that. Please do not fall for that. Here is the mayor of Chicago. This is amazing. During a press conference on Tuesday, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson. Chicago has had. I mean, this city is I'm, I broadcast from Philadelphia. It's not much better. But the amount of violence in Chicago on a nightly basis, it's a city that is it's a, I mean, criminals run the place. They run the place. But who's to blame for this? You might wonder. It's not it's not years and decades of Democrats, corruption and allowing a city to be destroyed from within. It's not that you see. It's not that at all. Cut number four. Well, it has to be better coordination. You know, what we've seen is a very raggedy form um, instituted by right wing extremism. Um, Everyone knows that the right wing extremism in this country has targeted democratically ran cities. And quite frankly, uh, they've been very intentional about going after democratically ran cities that are led by people of color. And their whole motivation is to create disruption and chaos because that's what this that particular party has been about. Right? This is the same political party that did not want to accept that President Obama was actually an American. It's the same Republican right wing extremism that stormed the Capitol. It's the same right wing extremism that refuses to accept the results of the Civil War. It's raggedy. It's disrespectful. It's mean spirited. It's an unclean spirit, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, we, 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 we refuse to accept the results of the Civil War. Look, I may not accept the results of the time that Tom Brady inflated footballs, but I, I certainly accept the results of the Civil War, uh, particularly because my side won, by the way. The Republicans won. You may, you may have forgotten this, but they were the home team and they won. The Democrats lost that battle. They lost that war. So who, who, who is not accepting the results of the Civil War? Is this in dispute or are we... Are we going back and looking at the archive tapes, trying to challenge the call on the field? Is this guy? See, this is enough. This is what I mean about these people. Just they can never take responsibility for anything. It's never the criminals. It's never the fault of criminals. It's right wing extremists. The reason why their city is 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 a hellhole is because of crime. But it's actually not because of crime. You see, it's really because of right wing extremism. And each and every one of you who refuses to except the results of the Civil War, which I didn't know was a thing. I thought it was pretty universally understood who won. But I, hey, look, 
You learn something new every day. This is the Mark Levin Show with me, Rich Zioli, in for the great one coming right back. Mark Levin. You know, tomorrow is the big climate change summit, right? In uh, Dubai. I'm very excited for Dubai. I really am. I'm cheering them on. I, I, I am. I'm cheering them on. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because they have a great sense of humor. They really do. And they're smart. And they're kind of doing it. It's like the Jersey way. It's, it's like having corrupt politicians running an ethics conference. And then the whole time they're there, they're, you know, they're arranging dinners to get more bribes. Or it's a, an abstinence conference where at the end of the night, everybody goes to a strip club. This is Dubai. This is a country, the United Arab Emirates, that is an oil-rich nation, which is, by the way, doubling down on oil. They're doubling down on petroleum. They're, build, they're literally building islands so that they can expand their drilling operations in the ocean. I love it. I say bravo to Dubai. It's like the entire thing. We'll host you. We'll, we'll take all the money. We'll go on about how we'll get we'll serve paper straws like I'm sure they're going to have paper straws and they'll probably won't no bags or anything like that. They'll show all their fleets of green vehicles, battery powered vehicles, which shh, don't tell anybody will have to be charged. And the electric grid there is probably run by shh, oil, but, but, but don't tell them just zip, zip, zip it and they'll do all those things. They'll have recycled cocktail napkins. For all the fancy drinks from all the fancy people who fly to the, cli- the cli- uh, climate conference tomorrow on private jets and yachts and get chauffeured around in private cars. A lot, lot of cars, a lot of big SUVs. You got to look like a baller at these things. You don't want to show up and really get out of a Prius. You want to look like a baller. So there's going to be a lot of emissions spewed during the climate change conference, obviously. And look, you could make an argument could we not just do this over Zoom? I mean, do all these people have to travel to Dubai to talk about how to save the world from climate change? Couldn't they just, I don't know, log on their computer? But that's beside the point. These are superheroes, you see. These are people going to, the, to Dubai to tell us how to live. And I'm so excited for their recommendations, aren't you? I can't wait to tell us the latest bug recipes they come up with. Maybe we can do, when I was a kid, I loved the chocolate grasshoppers. They were cookies. But maybe it'll be real grasshoppers with chocolate on them. I think that might be a recommendation from the Climate Change Summit. Also, they can come up with more things like how to make mosquitoes uh, engineered to bite us so that we become intolerant to meat as they tell us to stop eating meat. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. The biggest hypocrites on the planet gathering in an oil-rich nation with eyes on more petroleum to tell us how to live our lives in the name of destroying capitalism under this phony climate change propaganda nonsense. It's been an honor to fill in for the great one, Mark Levin. Follow me on Twitter, at Rich Zioli, and I will be back very, very soon, I hope, with you. Good night.